Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. If you haven't heard yet, there's a new expansion coming to World of Warcraft. It's called the Burning Crusade. People ask quite a bit what they should be doing to prepare. Usually I just answer this with just play the game. I think people underestimate the value of the unknown and just discovery of games in general. But that's pretty much a non-answer, and like I said, I do get asked a lot. So I thought it would be video worthy because I do have some things that maybe some people haven't thought of yet. So no real order here, I'm basically just going to machine gun them to you. First here, and this will be pre-patch not launch, there are two new races coming to the game, the Space Goats and the Sexy Elves. Sometime before launch we will get a pre-patch that will convert the honor system, implement some class balance changes, and allow us to create new races. One thing you might want to consider is to set up a summoning alt to the other races starting areas, or if you have a warlock friend that would help you out. It really depends on your balance. The new races come with new zones actually. I'm in one of them right now called Blood Mist Isle, and I know a lot of people want to do the new zones and that's fine, but keep in mind that a lot of people will want to do them as well, so you need to make that decision. Is playing through these new zones worth it considering that they'll be super flooded? Maybe it'll take forever to complete quests, or maybe you simply want to start grinding rep for another race for their mounts. Remember, low level quests give you lower reps, so the sooner you get to the other races area, the better. Just remember to keep your hearth in your major city though because, correct me if I'm wrong here, I think that you can only train shaman spells in Exodar for the alliance, and you can only train paladin spells in Silvermoon as Horde. And on the flip side, I'm sure you can also use this as an opportunity to earn some gold if you're a warlock. You can offer summons to people for a price. I think there would be a decent demand for it. Just something to consider. For tip number two here, if you do plan on leveling one of these characters, you should stock up on good BOEs right now for leveling. Since dungeon power leveling has really taken over the game, low level blues and purples are at an all time low right now. When the pre-patch hits, the AOE cap will be introduced, which won't kill power leveling I think, but it will damage it quite a bit since everybody's still capped at level 60 at the time, and since Draenei and Blood Elves are initially locked out of that paid character boost. Players who choose these races will have to actually go out and quest, which will increase the demand of these low level BOEs shortly after launch, so if you plan on making a shaman, pick up some leather and mail, and if you plan on making a paladin, pick up some mail and plate, some weapons. It'll make things easier for you and save you some money. The next tip I'm going to tell you is to clear your bags. I see it all too often. Everybody is getting all ready for the expansion, they're at the dark portal ready to go, and they have four inventory slots, so take the time now to only keep the essentials with you. Important consumes, maybe an off tank set if you're a warrior or something. But other than that, try to travel light unless you want to constantly be destroying items when you're trying to pick up your quest items. Jewel crafting is a new profession coming with the expansion. If you plan on becoming one, which will also be in the pre-patch I imagine, stocking up on ore and gems now is a pretty good idea. Here's a list that I got from Thoughtbot. You need the gems to level it, and the ore you can prospect into gems, so it's best to stock up on that now rather than the pre-patch when everybody starts leveling up jewel crafting, which will drive the prices up. And on the flip side, it might also be worth holding on to any ore that you have now to sell for a higher price in the pre-patch. In general, getting your professions ready now is going to be a good idea. When you hit 70, the last thing you want to do is catch up in old world professions. You want to be able to start right from 300, right? Crafting is going to play a huge role in gearing in the Burning Crusade. I'd argue on par or even more than in vanilla, so it's very important that you A. Know what professions you want, and B. Have them capped at 300 before launch. I do plan on making a profession picking guide. It's the last of my three big guides for BC, the others being races and classes which are on my channel if you're curious. My goal is to get that out before pre-patch, so keep an eye out for that if you don't know where to begin here. And since I'm on the subject too, you might be wondering how your class holds up in BC. The meta for BC is going to change quite wildly. Typically it's going to start swinging in the favor of ranged classes you'll find, which may be especially troublesome since we're going from a game where we have such an overabundance of warriors and rogues. They can hold their own depending on the tier, but in general they fall behind ranged. I'd be especially mindful of this if you are a rogue or a warrior, and only go into BC if you really really love the class. There's nothing wrong with it, that's what I'm doing, but just know that all of those classes and specs that you've laughed at for the past year and a half will have their revenge, 
which may make it more difficult to secure a raid spot. And on that note as well, it might be a good idea to have a few 60s ready to go just in case. Maybe a class seems cool and fun, and you get it to 70, but it turns out that it's just not clicking with you. However, if you maybe have a few contenders for your main, and you have trouble deciding, try to get a few 60s leveled up as a backup so, if you do switch mains, you can get right into Outland. That way, you're punished less if you do end up changing your mind. In general, I'm always an advocate of leveling, and if you're curious, now is a pretty good time because ever since the Burning Crusade got announced, natural world leveling has seen a return. It depends on your server though. The lower population servers might still be pretty empty. Fairly and I know though is popping off, which is awesome. There are a handful of items that do carry over pretty well in the Burning Crusade. A common example you may know is Thunder Fury. Due to its proc, the threat generation holds up very well and tanks will be using this in Burning Crusade because it's just that good. Now, obviously, it's easier said than done to just get a Thunder Fury, but there are plenty more that you will find handy in BC. Various gear pieces from Nexramus, crafted items, Mark of the Champion is going to be great still for Mount Hygel, Badge of the Swarm Guard is still used in certain scenarios. The list is quite long, and it's a subject that's covered quite well already, so instead of listing them out here, I'll just have links to other videos class by class in the description, so that way you don't have to sit through classes that you don't play. And not just items, but consumes as well. The Brilliant Wizard Oil is still the best oil for certain classes, so it's worth stocking up on those, or at least the materials to make them. And considering that the expansion is all about a demon invasion, the Elixir of Demon Slaying is going to be a must. Elemental Sharpening Stones are still handy, Dark Ruins... Just try to get all of the stuff that you see on screen right now, of course adapting depending on what class you are and things of that nature. And since we mentioned Arena, and this is for all of the sweat lords out there, but something I encourage now is to start dueling your own faction. Learn their racials. If you're Alliance, learn how to deal with Escape Artist. If you're Horde, learn how to deal with Will of the Forsaken. Throughout all of the game here, competitive PvP has been in the context of Horde versus Alliance. However, that's shifting in the Burning Crusade because in Arena, you can fight your own faction. I know that there are a lot of you out there who picked Horde on your Warlock because you didn't want to deal with Will of the Forsaken, or maybe you're a Horde Rogue so you didn't have to deal with the Orc Stun Resist. Now is as good a time as any to get some duels in and start developing strategies because these racials play a huge part in BC Arena, and having a better knowledge and understanding of how they work will win you games, period. And do know that Arena Skirmishes should also be available in the pre-patch too. So maybe if you want to practice a bit before the actual expansion launches, definitely take advantage of that and you'll have a bit of an experience edge over other people once you do hit 70. And next up, getting into some of the gold stuff. I already mentioned the ore for jewel crafting, summons to starter zones. Something you can do now is start working on transmute alts. Some professions in the game have the ability to transmute items into other items on a once per day or once every few day basis. Because it has this cooldown, they have value, and people will pay you money for the cooldown alone. You don't even need the materials, the buyer provides that. For example, alchemy can do the primal might transmutes, and you can even become a transmute master, which gives you a chance to proc extra items. Tailors can do primal moon cloth, spell cloth, and so on. But to train the professions high enough to learn the recipes, you do need a certain character level, and for the BC stuff, it's level 50, so... Leveling characters now, or at least leveling the respective professions on them, is going to be a good idea. It's almost like passive gold making. You just log in, click a button, and bam. People really underestimate how powerful it is. Like I said in other videos, I used it to fund my rank 14 grind, which is very expensive, and it gets even stronger in the Burning Crusade, in my opinion, with these procs. While we're at it, farming gold in general before launch is going to be helpful, of course. I don't know if you guys knew this, but we're actually going to be flying in the Burning Crusade if you saw the trailer. So a good number to hit is around 5,000 because that's the cost of the epic flying mount training. I'd say farm a bit more than that to get some breathing room. Around 7,000 would be the point where I'd personally be comfortable going into Burning Crusade with. I'm sure you all have your own methods of making gold, but just thought it worth mentioning because it might be worth being a bit more frugal from now until launch and start stocking up. Next, another pre-patch tip here is to take advantage of the PvP gear. In the pre-patch, the honor system gets changed drastically. 
You no longer need ranks to purchase any of the gear, armor, weapons, mounts, all of it. You'll instead just earn honor points from PvP, and you spend these honor points on the gear. And you also need these marks of honor that you get for winning or losing a battleground, so it's a good idea to stock up on these now for sure. They only stack to 20 right now, but something you may as well work on, right? Going into the Burning Crusade when it actually launches with full rank 14 gear will make a big difference, especially for those on PvP servers. Plus, they just look cool, so why not? And speaking of launch, let's talk about the actual launch. The best advice I can give you here is to just have a plan. You guys remember when Classic launched and the starter zones were absolutely flooded, queues were insane, and everybody was lagging their asses off? Remember when this all happened, when the entirety of the player base was split up across the world in six separate zones? Well, in Burning Crusade, there's one starter zone, and that's the Hellfire Peninsula, and it's gonna be insane, especially if they do release the paid character boost. Now, I'm sure there will be layering, and we'll have to see how that goes, but the key here is to have a plan. I would just go in expecting that you won't be able to complete any of the quests, and that you'll be corpse camped if you're in an imbalanced PvP server. A lot of people do plan on leveling solely through dungeons. Honestly, as boring as that sounds, I do think that it'll be the fastest way to level, if you're the type of player who really wants to get straight into the endgame. If you do plan on leveling in the world though, I say don't even bother with Hellfire on launch day. Just head straight to Zanger March, which is just west of Hellfire. Some quests will be too high, but there are a good amount that you can do, and it definitely will be less hectic than Hellfire. And maybe the next day, or a few days after that initial surge, you can backtrack and finish that up. So it really just depends on the type of player you are. Do you want to do the quests and have that more natural leveling experience? Or do you want to get in those dungeons ASAP and be in that first group of level 70s? If you're the type to really try to get level 70 quick, something you can do is stack quests. That is, get a bunch of quests all completed and ready to turn in, but hold off until the expansion has actually launched. You can hold 20 quests in your quest log at a time, so if you want, you can just find a few quest hubs that you haven't finished yet and get all of those ready, and as soon as the expansion starts, turn them in, then hearth to a location close to the dark portal, and you'll be one of the first people to 61. Again though, only if leveling really quickly is important to you, which I know it isn't for a lot of people. There are some other things you can do to prepare for the madness. Something I plan on doing is bringing plenty of invisibility potions, that's for sure. These are lifelines on PvP servers, and I can pretty much guarantee you if you're planning on leveling in the world, these things will be more than worth it. But don't stop there, we also have free action potions, general PvP consumes, grenades, health pots. Don't be caught with your pants down for sure if you do plan on leveling in the world on a PvP server. So that's the in-game stuff. Let's go ahead and shift on over to real life. Something I learned a long time ago with World of Warcraft is that as you grind reputation in-game, you actually lose it in real life. So for the three people out there watching who have a husband, wife, boyfriend, or girlfriend, start working on that reputation now. Let them know that on release date and onward, to interact with you, they have to wait in the server queue just like everybody else. Gamer food is going to be a must. The tried and true hot pocket never fails. You have Mountain Dew, Doritos, Cool Ranch, or Nacho Cheese. But the bottom line is that if your gaming arena doesn't look like this one week after launch, you're doing something wrong. If you're looking for other like-minded people out there, there do exist communities. I do actually have a GeoCities page for World of Warcraft that I'll have linked in the description. Um, ThoughtBot is the best database for World of Warcraft as you probably know by now. I'm part of a TeamSpeak server solely for the Burning Crusade Classic. It's a good place to talk about it and meet like-minded people. The most important thing really is to just enjoy yourselves and to make... Whoa, hey buddy, you're in the shot. Oh, sorry about that, buds. I was just on my way over to SMCAT to help some friends level up. Oh, okay, that's fine. Wait, actually, I got a Warlock and Hunter I need to level. You got room? Yeah, for sure. We're going to get you some levels. Just remember to rate the video five stars, add it to your favorites if you liked it, and I've circled it in red here to click on more for this user because I'm always adding more and more videos. And lastly, hit the subscribe button, and that way you'll actually be notified whenever I do upload a new one. 
This YouTube stuff sounds pretty cool. Have you been doing it for long? Well, actually, this is the first video I'm making. I think I'm going to share the Hobbs way of pulling. I know a lot of people are having trouble earning gold. Aha! Uh -huh. so I'm going to be the best warlock ever. Watch out, Illidan. I am prepared. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.